Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to our Friday Automator Hangout. It is 2 p.m. We're super stoked to welcome you. Jordan Chu's with us. Hey, Jordan, how's it going? Hey, Noah. We're exceptionally excited to have Aaron Weike, the CEO of Gather Up, with us today. Hey, Aaron, how you doing? Thanks for having me, fellas. I'm doing fantastic. Cool. Uh, today, we're going to be talking all about reviews, reputation management, customer, customer experience management. With Aaron, he's going to give us a ton of insight into how, how this will impact both rankings uh, it, and more importantly, how it'll impact your business and how it, um, how you can grow conversions and have happier customers year round. Um, with that, Aaron, can you tell us a little bit about you and, and your history and how you came to gather up? Yeah. Um, so to surmise the last couple of decades, somewhere in the, the mid nineties, someone asked me to code a web page cause, uh, I was the only guy that had an email address at the company. Uh, so picked up a book on HTML and started building uh, web pages. You just need to build a page back then. Um, and then from there, just kind of uh, started building a lot of small business websites, uh, built a few small digital marketing agencies. Uh, and obviously in the you know, mid, uh, early 2000s, right around 2000, a little after that, started looking into like, all right, you're building these sites. Now, how do you get found? And you know, some of the things in the early days was just buying a listing in the Yahoo directory. And that was probably half the battle. Uh, and then obviously Google came along and, and changed all of that. And so getting into SEO very deep then. Uh, and then when local SE came around, SEO you know, came into more of full force in the, in the later, uh, you know, early single digits of the 2000s. Since I'd worked with so many small business websites, you know, got a lot into local from there as well. Um, just kind of stair strap approach, kept building agencies that were a little bit bigger, serving a bigger client base uh, and things like that. Um, and then roughly about four years ago now, um, almost to this week, um, my good friend, Mike Blumenthal, uh, you know, we just kind of started talking. I was ready after I think about 17 years in, in the agency world. Uh, the agency I was at, we had grown to about 50 people, um, the multiple millions in revenue, and I wasn't doing the, the work I wanted to do anymore and was looking for a change. And Mike said, how about uh, coming on over and working with us on reviews and customer experience and those kind of things? And came on board four years ago and uh, have, have loved it ever since. I, I can't believe it's actually been four years. It's one of those, uh, if you ever hit a, a point in time where you're just, um, I don't know, just so into drinking the Kool-Aid on what you're doing and loving what you're doing and the customers you get to work with and everything else. Like I, it literally feels like I've been here a year, even though it's been, been four years. So yeah, just uh, I've had my hands in digital for a very long time and uh, definitely love it. It's definitely the, the spot for me. How did you know that you wanted to go from the service side to the SaaS side? I've been listening to your podcast with Darren and, and that's been pretty fascinating. I was hoping you can dig into that a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Um, and thanks for listening. Um, yeah, I don't know if I even really knew it. Um, but some of the things I was looking at, right. The, the things within, um, you know, building and scaling a, an agency that are tough is, you know, uh, humans and people are almost always your biggest assets there. You're trying to create billable hours and projects and retainers and things like that. Um, and retainers are your best route because that's predictable reoccurring revenue, which is so important in, in an agency that the more of that you have, the better balance you have. And you can equal out your staff and understand supply and demand and things like that. Um, and yeah, I just as we got bigger and especially, you know, I, I live in the Minneapolis uh, area and that's where my agencies have always been. I was spending more time on the talent side, either protecting from other people, hiring away our talent, recruiting them, headhunters. We have a lot of corporate. Sometimes we'd even get clients that are like, hey, we really love this developer you keep bringing on site. Like we want to hire them. Um, so it was that, that part of it where I just started to get a little bit worn out and that's what caused me to look into other things. So I don't even know if it's so much that I knew I wanted to find product, but it wasn't within a couple of months where I was like, all right, this is a, you know, this is a whole different beast. Um, and I still, from the agency side, I miss, um, I miss having so many intelligent people, right? When you're in a, an office with so many mixed disciplines and you can grab a developer, a designer, a search strategist and the content person and go like work on a, a small project or spitball some ideas like super powerful yeah. that doesn't so much happen inside of a of, of a SaaS company um but 
just being able to focus all your efforts on kind of, you know, one similar vein and, you know, all inside one product and run strategy and one set of tactics. Uh, there's, there's definitely something to be said about that. Cool. Um, did you want to um, tell us a little bit, do you want to jump into the deck or do you want to actually, sorry, I'm so spacey. Yeah. Can you give us, um, there's been a ton of algorithm changes as always, but um, I had a, a, a really interesting read in Marie Haynes' recent blog post about the, the recent June algorithm changes. Can you tell us uh, what you are seeing at Gather Up in terms of how reviews are playing into that and brand reputation? Yeah. Uh, so like at a, at a 10,000 foot view with this, um, yeah, at, at the core, we continue to see more and more of, of reputation and, and what other people think about you. And I guess for me, I, I, I've kind of always been waiting for this to, to bubble to the surface. Um, just from the fact that Google's always trying to emulate, you know, trust and, and authority right behind what they do. And they've had to use so many like um, on-site uh, type things and just so many things that can be manipulated. And when you have things that can be manipulated, it's hard to derive trust and authority from those. So uh, as we've seen over the course of time from, you know, spamming meta keywords to uh, link farms, you know, e everything else, like all of these things can be gamed. And, you know, Google obviously in, in mass tries to do what they can and make corrections of, you know, Penguin and Panda and, and all of these, you know, different algorithmic uh, changes and, and corrections and, and things like that. Um, but I, I think the area where they realize we can get the most amount of trust is from, you know, what is the consensus? What are people saying when they talk about this business? Um, and that's just the biggest shift I feel like we've seen in marketing as an overall is now instead of the brand of voice being controlled by the brand and their marketing campaigns and radio ads and TV ads and billboards, now it's really controlled by what are all your consumers saying out on social media and writing reviews on sites and sharing with each other on Facebook. So, you know, Google has this entirely different fire hose now than they did a decade ago to tap into to establish credibility and to establish authority. So, you know, from a really high level, to me, all of that makes a lot of, uh, of sense because it's much harder to game 10,000 people's opinions or 1,000 people's opinions or even 100 people's opinions um, than it is to game links or the content you're putting on a page, all these things that are a lot more static. And just even the, in the last couple of months, some of the things that we've started seeing, um, you know, Google's question and answer feature, we're seeing that now being answered by content that's in reviews. So Google is processing the reviews, they're using natural language processing, they're understanding what people are, are talking about, and writing about in the review. So when someone else has a question about that business, they're going to try to answer it with past review content. Uh, and then we've seen, you know, some of the interface changes in the last few weeks where if you're even typing in like, you know, what is Tom's Pizza's phone number or what is, you know, Acme Laundry's hours of operation, um, it's going to give you that answer, um, but it's also going to attach the reputation data to it as well. And to me, these are just all part of signals that like, you know, who you're dealing with, no matter if you're trying to walk through their door, call them, send an email, whatever else. Google feels that's a really important part of your decision making process and that you should be aware of what that business's reputation is. And we really feel like that, you know, your reputation data probably is going to end up being the most visible thing about your business that no matter what someone else is trying to find or look for or whatever else, Google also wants you to understand, you know, is this reputation probably from a, a good company that you actually want to talk to? I feel like when I need a practitioner for anything, I, I search for whatever is commonsensical to me. And then the first thing I do is, is read through all the reviews. And if the reviews are really good and there's high, you know, high velocity, you know, constant velocity and positive, and then I look through the ones and the twos, i.e. the bad ones. And uh, if all that stuff's good, I just decide right away because our time's so precious now. It's not like I don't need, have time to look through 17 choices. Yep. Yep. <laughs> and, and, and Amazon has conditioned us to do a lot of that, right? Because, um, you know, the Amazon realized a long time ago, if we're going to get people to buy things without touching them, feeling them, seeing them, whatever else, then we have to bring social proof to this. Uh, and they've done that at, at, at scale with what they've done in products. And, you know, to me, that's really bled over into so many things from, 
hiring a local plumber, someone to mow your lawn, someone to paint your house, who's going to do your taxes, all these things where we're constantly looking or we might be in the market for the first time for a type of service. And we want to understand, are these guys great to work with? Do they respond if I have an issue? How do other people feel about them? All of those different aspects that reviews just wrap up really, really nicely for people. And you don't have to like interact to do it, right? Where our, uh, our society has become one where if we're behind a keyboard and a screen, we're so much happier and it's so much easier. So the fact that I can uh, get these 10, 20, 200, 2000 opinions uh, all in one screen and all in one shot and consume them all on my own time, uh, that, that's a win for most consumers nowadays. Can you, so you were saying that they're pulling answers from review data. Is it is it just Google reviews or is it first party re reviews off your website or where, what's the source? Yeah. For those they are pulling just Google reviews. So it's all the internal Google reviews that, uh, that are, that are there. So if you, uh, like one of the examples in the post we wrote on, it was like, uh, you know, I just typed in like, is there uh, fish fresh for like a, a seafood restaurant that was there and it starts pulling up all the reviews of anybody talking about how fresh they felt like the fish was and their meal and, and anything related uh, to that being there so yeah they absolutely use those first but you know to your earlier point Noah so many people nowadays they're going to type in a brand and then the word reviews after it right so it might be like you know Minneapolis Hyatt Hotel reviews um, or a specific accountant and reviews because they are going to skip past whatever content that they've written them about themselves as the business. And they want to go right to what are other consumers saying about um, this company? So the rise of those type of search terms. And then we see from Google themselves, right? That the searches for anything product service. I mean, they are just so riddled with review stars and reputation data in those search results um, that Google understands that that's what the users want. That's what they click on. That's what they're seeking. Um, and they're finding as many ways to populate the search results with that reputation type information. There are a ton of players in your market and I've been incredibly impressed with your product. Um, you know, disclosure, I, I do resell gather up and I think it's just the best thing since sliced bread. Um, specifically because we can automate the process of gathering feedback and in growing the quantity re reviews. Um, can For those folks who aren't super familiar with GatherUp, can you give us an introduction to what you guys do and what sets you apart? Yeah, well, thanks for the plug. I appreciate that and the, and the kind words. Um, and yeah, we are in a very, very big space. Um, and you know, in, in a nutshell, what we want to do with gather up is really make customer experience the backbone of, of your business. Um, we offer a lot of features that play into the benefits of knowing what your customers think, letting them talk to you, easy roads to be able to provide that feedback a number of different ways. Online reviews uh, is just one of them. And we want to make help a business understand what their customer thinks so they can use that information to make themselves a better business. Um, I tell people all the time, we're not magical. If your customer has a two-star experience, just because you ask them with a pretty email or a nice text message, they're not going to write a five-star review after you gave them two-star service. But what we want to help you figure out is like, wow, what happened when that person had a two-star experience and can we correct it? Can we provide new training? Can we set better expectations? So we can more consistently deliver a five-star experience uh, to that customer that's there. So that's essentially what our, our product does is um, we have a, a number of different ways for a customer to get into our system, both proactive and passive. Uh, most want to use us to be proactive. So we always say we want to be the best two minute conversation after a transaction. So uh, after you receive a service or, or a product or, or, what, or have that encounter, we're going to reach out with a, you know, just a small handful of questions, capture that customer experience data, and then try to move that customer onto writing a, a, a review at uh, Google or a recommendation at Facebook or a review at, at TripAdvisor, all depending upon the industry and the, and the type of business you have. And then our platform collects all of that information as they're leaving it for you directly. We also monitor a ton of sites, give you a lot of management capabilities, reply capabilities, reporting capabilities. Uh, and then the last piece, and it's probably where I have so many agencies like us and resell us, um, is because we have a number of marketing tools, right? We help you stream those reviews up to your website to bring SEO content, social proof, um, you know, review schema to help populate stars in the search results. So 
the package of uh, you know all those things is we just want to set a you know a loop that you can work on lather rinse repeat by executing certain features and then you know certain ways that, that you handle it within the business um, and as far as yeah in a very crowded space i think the way we differentiate ourselves is because we're all agency guys right like this tool was built out of what we saw in working with small businesses in our agencies we weren't software people that said, hey, where can we build something that will scale and sell well and that we can get investors or whatever that might look like. You know, we looked at like something that we were working on every day and how could we automate that and make it better, um, make it easy for people to use. And that we kept in mind, right, where we have a, a white label version of our product and we have hundreds of fabulous agencies that we work with that resell our product that allow them to do great things for their end customer. Cool. I love it. Uh, do you want to jump into that loop and kind of share with us how agencies who aren't doing it yet, how they can use use a tool like yours to both help their businesses grow ROI, but also have a new revenue stream for their agencies? Yes, I would love to. Badass. All right. And let me know that you're seeing my slides just fine here. Sure. Yep. Yep. All right. Cool. Well, this is kind of the... A high level, um, when I get in, I, I always like to point this out to people as kind of a, a, a level setter. And the easiest way I describe today's world is just calling it the Amazon economy where pricing, availability, deliverability, like those are hard to compete on anymore because you can buy just about anything online, have it shipped to your door, whether it's Amazon or not, right? Like mattress companies, 10 years ago, they thought they were probably invincible because you needed to go lay on a bed to buy one and everything else. And now all of the big competitors there are all online. Um, but no matter what you're selling, product, service, or whatever else, the two biggest things left to like build a moat around are, are your brand and are your reputation. So we understand that. And that's why we want to build a, a tool set to help people build brand, defend their brand, um, and you know, get uh, new business because of their brand. So I kind of put together some slides to walk you guys through how we look at some of the things that can be automated in our platform and working to kind of complete um, this loop uh, that, that people go through. And we'll start way over on the, on, the, on the far left with adding customers into the system. Uh, I always describe this as our, our, uh, our, our software is an engine um, and the gasoline it really needs to, to run at top speed is customer information. Um, and that's just getting, you know, who is the customer? First name, last name, email address, or a mobile phone number uh, into our system. Uh, and the biggest thing we, we seek to do most of the, the time is, you know, get an automation through either using our API or, you know, doing an integration using another piece of software's API. But we want to tag on to a business process that's already taking place, right? Maybe it's an, an appointment marked close. Um, something in your, in your CRM says, you know, shift them to billing, uh, the, the job was completed, whatever that might be. Um, so a lot of people will use our API and, you know, there, there's the URL that it's at in, it, in our user guide. You can probably even just Google uh, gather up API and you'll come across our page and you'll be able to see, you know, it's fully, fully public and they can see then, okay, if, if I have development capabilities or I have a team, um, we can ingest their API to be able to then, you know, pull out who is the customer, um, what is the, the, the trigger that we're using to then make that action happen and pump that customer's information in to gather up so that we can then do the reach out um, and be able to request the customer experience data from the customer. Uh, as I mentioned, besides our API, um, when we have customers come to us and they don't have those kind of resources, then we're finding out like, all right, great. What is your point of sales or your ERP or your CRM or, you know, whatever they're using in their tech stack that, that basically has the customer information and has something we can use as, as a trigger. So this could even be like loyalty software uh, as well in, in certain industries. Um, so then we'll actually just do a, you know, do a quote for them and say, yeah, hey, it'll take us, you know, this handful of hours to be able to say every time this specific event happens in this piece of software, um, that they just need to send us first name, last name, an email address and or mobile number, and then we'll do the rest of, of the work from there. So we have a handful of uh, integrations into CRMs and POSs, as you know, you guys probably know, and, and hopefully your audience. I mean, once you understand the language of, of APIs, it really just comes down to these platforms. One, do they have one publicly and is using it included in what you're doing? 
those are dream situations because then they're usually, you know, a well-documented public API. And so our team can just say, great, here's what we need to grab. Are you using these fields to mark like an appointment complete or whatever that might be? Um, and then we're off and running. Some though, right, that their API might be something that they charge for, that they have a limitation in calls. Uh, and then we'll help that customer kind of back and forth with that to navigate those waters and be like, all right, to automate this, here's what it, it might take. Um, so yeah, APIs both ways, either us consuming or another piece of software uh, consuming, we can, we can help make that happen. I think the, just for people who might not know, the, the best part about working with your API is that there's zero friction for the client. Yep. Like if it's a small or medium sized business, um, if you can get them set up with an API, they won't have to do anything. Yep. Yeah, and, absolutely. And we, we really, I, we think more than anything that like, the, we think of this kind of like first in our business as opposed to like last in it. Um, data is the true commodity, right? And so sharing it and porting it from one uh, piece of software to another, that shouldn't be the challenge in today's day and age. Sadly, it, you know, it still is. And, and I get there has to be some limitations um, to, you know, number of calls, volume, uh, things like that. But uh, really at the end of the day, we want to make it as easy as possible for people to utilize what we have available with it. Um, and we have, we have some more plans in the works too. We've already done a few different uh, integrations where we're in, listening to like webhooks, um, but we want to build that into our platform as well, uh, hopefully in 2020, where we'll have webhooks available that then you can go and uh, grab and use those uh, on the other side. Cool. That's super cool. Yeah. So if you're not technically minded, uh, you know, obviously a, a great, I, I call this a, you know, a gift of automation is Zapier, right? No, no easier to create automations between two different software platforms than to use Zapier at a, at a very low cost. Uh, and this is hugely beneficial for agencies because with one Zapier account, you can just go to town creating Zaps, spread that, you know, the cost of Zapier, which is, you know, still not a very uh, big cost, right? If, if you hired a, a developer to do an integration, you might pay thousands or need to have one on staff. Um, but, you know, for under a hundred or just over a hundred dollars a month, you can run so many Zaps through Zapier. So, you know, if not familiar, Zapier lets you connect two different apps, two different pieces of software, as long as they've created an app out in the Zapier marketplace. Um, and Zapier has a well over a thousand, right? So um, we see some really common things. And, and when you go to build it, it's really kind of centered off of, you know, two things in their world, a trigger and then an action. Um, so the trigger might be if you add a customer's name into a, a Google spreadsheet, um, it then automatically then sends them to us to send the, the action of requesting uh, feedback or an integration with like QuickBooks online. So when that customer's service has been complete and you go to like, you know, hit them for an invoice, it'll also send us the information so then we can reach out and request a review. Um, so there's just really a number of, of different things within your process and just looking at like, okay, here's the software that we're already using in our tech stack that could be a CRM, a POS, you know, could be a payment system like Square, right? You could be a food truck and you swipe your card and then it automatically is going to send that customer's uh, information of first name, last name, and email address to us to ask for feedback so they get an email or a text message um, within minutes of completing their order with you uh, to capture feedback from. So, you know, Zapier is just so powerful, so many different uh, options and, and apps with it. Uh, I almost always tell people like start there and most agencies are pretty fluent in Zapier nowadays because internally it can save them so much time with what they're doing. Absolutely. This is how I, how I started utilizing your tool. Awesome. Good, good to hear it. And yeah, it's just a really easy way to, to get comfortable and get those initial uh, automations going. All right, so once we have that side, and I, and I do, it's oh, so hard for me not to point out, like we have literally a dozen other ways into our platform. We're obviously <laughs> focusing just on automation today. <laughs> it's killing the sales side of me not to talk about like, oh, here's inbound text messages, here's outbound text messages, everything else, but I'll, I'll restrain myself. But uh, once, that, once that gets in, you know, we always looked for, and this was a, especially in the early stages of, um, you know, our space, requesting reviews was really the biggest thing to come onto the scene as an automation that could be helpful because 
you know, we were all doing this in agencies as more of one offs or, you know, uploading a spreadsheet into another piece of software, like a, a MailChimp or constant contact or campaign monitor, and then, you know, sending out and asking for reviews that way. Um, so we really wanted to take this and, and automate it as well. So, you know, within our system, we basically have request modes. And we have three different core modes that allow you to, uh, it basically helps you designate what's most important, what type of customer experience data are you trying to get from that customer? Um, and there's a number of steps uh, in our platform and, and a lot of them have settings. So like once you send that initial request saying like, hey, great, thanks for coming in and, and you know, buying from Bob's hardware store, tell us how your experience was. If the customer doesn't act with that, our systems automatically, you have the ability to send out a reminder. So if they don't take any action or leave you any feedback, you can say, great, two days after that first one was sent, let's set another one. Then you have the option to turn on a, a second reminder. And so now we can say, all right, seven days after that second one, if they still didn't interact, let's try them again and try to get them to, to interact and, and leave us feedback there. And then say they go through some of that processes. Then we have, you know, ones that's like, great, thanks for telling them this stuff but we noticed you didn't head off to Google and leave a review. Would you kindly write a, you know, a review on Google for us? It's really important. So we look at our process and as you can see here from the screenshot, you know, a number of things that you can turn on and off, set the timing intervals uh, for, but we really want, even if you put a customer in manually, we want to do the work to say like, all right, have they done anything? Nope, they haven't. Let's reach out and prompt them again. Have they done anything? Nope, they haven't. Let's reach out and prompt them again. Um, as you can see, we don't allow you to have a hundred of these because we don't want that customer to hate you because you're just pinging <laughs> with email over and over again. So um, we really want it to be a win-win at the end of the day for both the business and, and the customer. So, uh, but yeah, within requesting those, having those reminders um, come in handy. So this is kind of what might that, that might look like, right? So uh, say the local burger joint after you're in, they send you a, a text message um, that says, you know, hey, great, we love your you know, feedback on coming in with us. Please click this link. The customer doesn't take any, um, you know, action on that. And two days later, we'll send an email reminder. Um, that's one other thing, you know, you can use email for that first request, but we feel, or SMS for that first request. But we feel that, you know, text is a very much more, you know, closer uh, and more personal communication. And if you, you know, keep hitting someone with text messages, you're likely to do yourself more harm than, than help um, because, you know, almost 100%, right? Uh, SMS open rates are like 97%. So if they saw your message, they just didn't want to leave you feedback at the time. So then we roll over if you've also added an email address. So the first reminder comes from, you know, an email instead. And then the second reminder would come from an email as well. So you're able to kind of mix some communication paths, but again, the, the system does it all for you. So this reminds me of a card abandonment tool that, that we built called Bike Basket. And we have, a, we have a good sense of where we're getting our conversions. Yep. Where are you seeing conversions for feedback in terms of the different methods of, of getting feedback? Are you seeing differences between SMS and email? Uh, so really great question. Um, one, actually no, right? And this is one of those, um, you know, when uh, we were talking beforehand, you asked me to maybe mention some mistakes. Um, we thought that because of how SMS is, uh, we thought that that would be a game changer, right? Um, and really what we see more rooted to anything is the medium you're communicating to your customer doesn't matter as much as did they have a good brand experience? Do they, do they like your brand when they see anything from you, right? If they see your name in a subject line in email or on a text message, does part of them say like, oh, cool, I like that brand or not? Um, because they're not going to love you anymore once you uh, reach out uh, based on, on anything else. Um, and, and the second is, is just timing. Are you contacting them as close as possible? So the ones that do this really well, they're sending this request, whether it's SMS or an email, as close to that transaction as possible, right? And that's the beauty when you have automation, something else in your process is already telling you, like this just happened, right? This order just came through our POS and now we have it timed. So within an hour, this goes out um, or this, uh, you know, uh, appointment was just marked completed. So now we're going to send this out, but email is going to be waiting for them when they get on their, their phone or the text message will be, and they might not even be out of our parking lot. 
So we see uh, more out of those recencies than anything. Um, and really when you have all these reminders turned on, we end up seeing about equal interaction from each of the steps, right? So it's not like this uh, funnel of like, well, 80% respond to the SMS request and then we get another five at the second and another five at the third. It's much closer to like equal at each step that's there. People are busy. They get a lot of incoming text messages, emails, especially. Um, so sometimes just hitting them at, at the right time or they, they subconsciously say to themselves like, oh yeah, I'll do that. And then what do you do? You forget, you go do a million other things and then the email comes in and it, it is the true reminder that they wanted. They're like, oh yeah, I was going to do that. Now I will go do that. So um, yeah, not, uh, not a wide variety, but if you have, um, you know, timing more than, more than anything else, that's, that's really going to be a, a big factor for you. So you would, I think in the platform, the, is it immediate one hour and then remind me how the choices work? In terms yeah. Of <clears throat> yep. So you kind of have two different options. One is when you add that customer, you can set it to, to send immediately upon hitting within the platform. Uh, the second that we have is for those that load up a lot of customers, we were, we will drip it uh, out over time. Um, but that's more for people. If they load up a, you know, say you download a list. Um, this is where you get to people that, you know, maybe once a month, someone in marketing will go and pull down, hey, here's everybody we interacted with. They pull down 300 or 500 customers. What we wanna then do is drip those out so it's more emulating the natural flow of when they're coming in. So now you don't all of a sudden have all these reviews that are all on the same date uh, and time. Um, so then we just kind of you know, open the dam a little bit of a time, send 20 out in a day, then send 20 out the next day, 20 the next day uh, from there. So. Yeah, quite a few different settings in there based on do you want us to hold them at all? Do we want to drip them out? Do you want them to go out immediately um, as they're added uh, into the system that's there? And then, yeah, then the reminders and a number of things can be anywhere from days to hours based on what type of step it is in the process. Sounds like we want to be way less than a day, though. Yeah, I mean, with that first one, you do want to be as close as possible to that customer. Um, you know, to, to truly get into optimization, the, the biggest thing you need to do is what we call seed the process. Like when that text message or email shows up, it shouldn't be a surprise to the customer. Um, you should have already in your, in your interaction said, hey, just so you know, we care a lot about feedback. And when we're done today, you're going to get a quick little survey and it's literally five questions or less. Please take the two minutes to answer that. It's really important to us, right? And so that one sentence in 30 seconds, that's going to help boost your interaction along with it getting quicker. Like, oh yeah, they just mentioned this to me and literally within a half an hour, I have this. An hour within eating my pizza, I have a request for feedback on it. So it's tight, tightly tied together and, and balled up. But yeah, the closer to that aha or the wow moment, uh, the better off you're going to be and the more accurate feedback you're going to get too, right? When you ask somebody a month later, they're like, was I even there? And what did happen, right? Like you're not going to get the most accurate opinion from your customers. Sure. Good questions. Uh, the next thing that we get into is once you're requesting it, um, we built a feature into our platform uh, last year called um, auto tagging. Um, and uh, I guess a, another thing here to think about that uh, took us a while to really get our minds around. Um, early on, we were so focused on helping get feedback and content information in for businesses. We didn't think as much about like w once you get all of that, once that fire hose is on, then what do you help them do with it? Um, and this was kind of where this feature was born is because we started getting some larger customers that were like, hey, this is great. You guys are getting us, right? We're getting like 20 to 25% response rates. The old junkie survey we were doing and the way we sent it, we were getting like 2% response rate. But now we have all of this data, like help us understand it better. Um, so we built auto tagging in essence is to really turn like unstructured keywords into like focused tags and themes, right? So instead of having thousands of ways that someone is talking about your business and your service and your staff, um, how do you boil that down into maybe five, 10, or, or a dozen like key topics that you really care about? Um, and then with, there's also a marketing play to this uh, that, that we'll get into as well. Um, but at the end of the day, we look at this like, all right, so let's build a list of 20 different keywords that if any of these keywords are mentioned, it applies to just this one tag, 
right? So like in the uh, example of a piece of content out of our system here, here's a Google review for a, a, a taco shop demo account I use. And so if the customer is mentioning, you know, anything like love, we have a tag that fires customer love. And this could be them talking about, you're great, you're awesome, we love you, I'm a fan, um, all kinds of different terms like that. So it could be something that is sentiment based like that. And then it can also be factual too, where, you know, if people mention at all something about like the shrimp tacos, we'll tag it with shrimp taco because maybe we want to, you know, have a dedicated page on our website about our famous shrimp taco. And we want to include reviews that only mention shrimp tacos on it. Um, or we want to understand how fe people feel about our service. So if they talking about, you know, the service is ridiculously fast. We want to know that when people are talking about service, we're earning great reviews with it. Um, or when people have a one-star experience, it's because they're talking about service and that's what's holding us back from delivering a, a great experience. Uh, so these tags that we apply, the system auto applies are, are really helpful because it can take somebody who's getting in dozens, hundreds, or even thousands of pieces of, of feedback between first party and third party reviews uh, to turn it into some. So this is just a snapshot out of our interface where you build what these look like. So for this one, for the, this taco restaurant, the tag is issue. And so if we see the terms below average, bland, burned, complain, complaint, dry, gross, issue, soggy, it's going to tag it with the word issue because we understand that the way the customer is talking and the words they're using, there's an issue uh, with what went on with their uh, experience. And you're able to add keywords. You can create new tags at uh, any point in time. But again, the whole focus is how do we group a whole lot of loose things and then group them together um, and, and get the power of understanding what are the themes of these reviews uh, more than anything else. Uh, and so this is just a, a snapshot of, um, the, you know, the dashboard from this account. So you can see a few of these different ones uh, coming in and what they might end up being tagged about, right? If they're talking about an issue, they might be talking about price. Um, you see in this one star uh, review here where they said the food was subpar, um, you know, bad quality and, and taste, 20 minute wait time. Um, inaccurate orders, and they're not going to be spending their money there again. Um, and then you have, you know, someone else on the flip side saying the best tacos in, in Minnesota, love what they're doing, and try their, their hot sauces as well. So these are all things you, you know, you want to be able to understand and break down by themes, uh, how people feel instead of each individual review. Um, any questions in you guys in, in looking at this? No, I know you're you know, somewhat familiar with the, the solution, but we just look at it. This is a great way to start building categories uh, of reviews that you can operationally learn from. And then as we go a little bit further uh, in this, we'll show you how to turn this into marketing power for you as well. Yeah, no, we use tagging for like bike repairs or bike rentals and we segment out yeah. for different service pages because we want to see review stars that are that are tagged associated with um, different service offerings. So, yeah, yeah that's it. a yeah, that's a great example, right? A, an auto dealership might tag service, used car sales, new car sales, right? So you can do some segmentation of departments. Um, we have some people use it for staff where they're going to when they upload the customer, they're going to add a tag that says, well, you know, Sarah was their sales rep or John was their sales rep. So then they can break down and do reporting later by like, how are John or Sarah's uh, customers talking about? So it's not just the content that's um, in there. You can also use it uh, from other areas as well. Um, but here, you know, where the, the system is automatically combing through. Once you build that list once, now we'll apply it to every review that's in there. Um, say you create one five years from now and you have 200,000 pieces of feedback you can select and say, run it through the entire history. So we can go back in time and now pull out any time that customer's talking and using those keywords. So really, really powerful. Uh, and we, yeah. So I've always gotten the sense that um, keywords in reviews are really powerful. How do we have multiple feedback requests so that we can use the keywords for different service offerings in the request? Yeah. So in our system right now, how you'd have to set it up is like a separate profile. Yeah. Um, we realize like that that's how you get the benefit to be able to have completely different language and different questions um, yeah. for that customer as a, as a profile. So it might be, you know, if it was, uh, you know, uh, city Ford, new car sales, city Ford, used car sales, you'd have two profiles um, within our platform. Um, we are conceptually working on some much larger plans. I can definitely say it'd be a, a 2020 year thing 
where you might be able to do some of that segmentation a little easier inside of one location. Um, we've, it's, you know, that not, uh, not a small feat, um, but, but we're definitely looking at that. But, and you can do some of that too. Like in addition to tags, we also have like a customer ID, uh, we have a custom ID. So we have three or four different fields that you can kind of use as metadata type fields with these when you add customers um, or apply to them afterwards that allow you to kind of, you know, move that data around or export it and then shift it and do some different reporting and pivot tables and Excel and things like that. Got it. So you, usually I tell people, if you have a situation like that, like come and talk to us and we'll walk you through, Hey, here's things that are available. Here's ways that we've seen people achieve this, but um, let's hear about what your end goal is. And then we can best prescribe a, a way to work through that with you. Uh, so once we bring all that content in, our system is automatically everything separated by location. And that's just because obviously review profiles are on a per location. You have a GMB profile for where that physical location, the business is a Yelp profile, a TripAdvisor profile, BBB profile. Um, so at a very minimum, our system is already kind of uh, segmented per location. So once all these reviews come in, we then have a feature of our review widget that allows you to stream those reviews back up to your website. Um, and there's a, a few different things that go on with this that are all up to your settings. Um, one is what type of content are you gonna display? Um, and here's something I probably should have you know, mentioned uh, earlier, if people aren't aware, but there's basically two types of reviews. Um, you know, the one most commonly associated with the word review is what's called the third party review. This is at a site like Google, TripAdvisor, Better Business Bureau. This is at a site that's at a distance um, from you that you don't control. Uh, but in addition that, you know, most marketers are now well aware of um, is first party reviews, right? This is a review directly to the business. Uh, it could be just called customer feedback. It could be testimonials. But when you have it structured the same way with a star rating and in a review format, um, you can use those reviews in a number of fabulous ways within marketing. And one of those most common ways is to stream those reviews up to, you know, a location page or a page on your website. If you want a one location, um, streaming these up to like your about page or creating a dedicated reviews page is extremely helpful. That way a customer can easily come in and see these uh, reviews that, that you have. You can also say like bring in my third party reviews as well. So any of the sites we're monitoring, um, Google, uh, Facebook for you know, recommendations now instead of reviews, um, Better Business Bureau, auto.com, whatever it might be, you can also display those same reviews, again, bringing them all in one spot. So you get your first party reviews and your third party reviews on there. A number of options where you can say automatically, you know, feed the ones up that are, are you know, three stars and above, feed all of them up. Um, a number of things that you can do to automate that process. So when they come in, you're then moving them all the way over into the marketing phase and displaying them on your site. Just to give some examples, we kind of have like uh, multiple different layouts that you can plug in. So this is, you know, this first one is what's just called our vertical. So you can control how many are on a page, it could be five, 10, 15, and then we'll paginate uh, through the rest. Um, then we also have a horizontal where a card format, so it's just gonna display three uh, within a card format. And then what we have is called a full page. This is gonna give you the rating, um, what they consist of, what rating types, and then show you, you know, the individual reviews themselves. Uh, a ton of stuff to go on here that, you know, doesn't fit into automation, but your uh, replies can be here from uh, your first party reviews. And, uh, you know, in, in a couple of steps too, we'll skip ahead. Um, and then we'll talk about uh, review schema because we mark up the first party reviews so that you can then get stars in the search results, which is extremely important uh, to your marketing as well. But uh, for now, without, you know, pulling the punch on, on what that does, um, you know, the biggest thing is like, let's get this content from inside our system and all the ways we've captured it. And let's push it out to where everyone can access it. Um, and Noah, just kind of as you were uh, alluding to, especially for multi-location businesses, like this content is a huge win, right? Because you get keyword rich, um, you know, content about those locations. And especially for multi-locations, those pages usually really struggle for content, right? It's the same old we have, here's our hours, here's our phone number, here's our map. And then they're like, uh, what else do we put here? They never update it. But when you're streaming these reviews up per location, now you're getting 
dozens, hundreds, thousands of reviews from each of those locations up there that are, you know, super keyword rich and add so much content to the page. So like even for these growler guys are like a, a 12 location uh, craft growler fill um, that's, that's on the West coast. Um, you know, just in this one review alone, we have keywords like IPAs, new beers, growler, fill growlers, right? And this is one of dozens that, that are on their site. So um, really a ton of SEO benefits. This is one that I always just say, if you're a multi-location and you're not doing something like this, like you are massively missing the boat, especially when you consider our world of being proximity driven, the location pages for your multi-location have the best chance to rank for someone doing near me searches, located by, right? And to appear in those organic results in addition to having, you know, a good strong foundation to help your map pack visibility and ranking. So just so, so important. This is one of those, you know, if you're a multi-location and you're not streaming first party reviews and third party reviews up to your location pages, like you're missing such a low hanging fruit to, you know, drive authority and, and visibility that you, you really got to get going on that. So. Got it. Hi. I've, I've, I've tended to put them on like a freestanding reviews or testimonials page. Yep. And if you're one on location, you like yeah. it. On Okay. Well, if you're a one location page, totally yeah. create a, a page like that. I, I would say in addition, you know, uh, link to it from on your homepage, use an internal link, like give it some internal credibility and say like, Hey, if you want to read our reviews, here they are. Um, but I, I usually find, you know, your about us page, depending upon how long has your site's been around or whatever else, it probably already has some credibility and authority. So that might be a great page to, to put it on as well. Um, so between those two, if you're one location, but the minute you have multiple locations, like you should be putting these on each of those locations, whether you're just five or 500 locations, like that's the best play for this content where you'll get the most bang for your buck and the most help in the search results. So I hate to get granular here, but for those who don't know, uh, one of the things that you guys put out is like multiple widgets. So you have like the full one, and then you have like the badge, the review badge. Yep. And historically, I've put the review badge on the location page going to the testimonials page because yeah. I felt like that was the key. That was the one-two punch that would push the review stars into search results. Yep. So are you recommending full reviews on location page? Or are you saying review badge pushing to a, a freestanding page? Yeah. So again, if you're one location, I don't, you know, you, you, you can absolutely, you know, do it that way. You have to look at like what page has the most amount of visibility, where would the customer expect something and, and, and what can we do in those areas? Um, so for one location, how you describe, you can totally do that, right? You could put them on the location page. You can put them on a review page with the badge that then links back to it, but the badge still has aggregate schema as well to provide stars for the location pages as well. You can put that badge on the home page, um, So you can kind of use that universally and it links back to here's where we display all the reviews, right? Because that's part of Google's terms of service with review schemas that you need to link back to where they're all displaying with it. So you can, de you can definitely do that. But again, once you get into multi-locations, you want to have, you want to show the reviews for each of those pages. Got it. Okay. Um, so the next piece is, uh, you know, now when we think back to when we auto tagged, um, now not only the operational insight, but uh, now you can feed those reviews specifically for that tag to a widget. Um, so we really look at it as like, how do you feed, you know, specific, um, you know, service, product, geo, whatever th that, that might be and have them display on that page. Uh, so if you're a, you know, a lawn maintenance business and in my neck of the woods, you're mowing lawns, you know, maybe uh, hopefully five months of the year, but six, seven months of the year, you're plowing snow, right? That's the most common thing. So one page is your lawn service. And so there you want all your customers talking about, you know, how they, how well you cut their lawn and you blow the driveway off afterwards and take good care of it. And the lawn's green, everything else. And then you have a snow plowing page talking about like, you know, Hey, you know, within a, an hour of snowfall being done, my driveway is cleared. It's never icy, any of those types of things. So now you can split different services off. Um, you can even split it off by staff members. So uh, here's just kind of an example for, um, you know, a, a jeweler, right? Mike Blumenthal's pet client, Barbara Oliver. So this page is streaming anything that talks about wedding rings, engagement ring, anything else, because the system's auto tagging it. 
then it's auto approving it and sending it up to this page. So she has dozens of reviews that are only about engagement rings being brought to this page. Um, so th this is just a really, really easy and fabulous way to be able to say, here is on our website, we've created these services pages um, or a staff page or, or whatever else. And now we want reviews just talking about that subject matter to appear there. Uh, so as I mentioned, a, a staff one, right? So you get doctors. So now you might want to tag anytime they're talking about Dr. Hone, right? So you have all these, you know, Dr. Hone, Dr. Hone, Dr. Hone, and they're on her bio page. So now if somebody's coming in and there's three or four doctors uh, at a specific place and be like, all right, as I read their about us, now I can also read what the customers have to say about them. So now I understand, is this someone who fits who I want to see or who am I going to request to make my appointment with? Uh, so this is a very powerful way to use that tag widget to separate where there might be 5, 10, 15 different small pieces of a service type, a product type, a geolocation, right? Some people, if you're into local, um, you're creating services pages because your business is in one town, but you might mow lawns in five other towns and you create landing pages for each of those towns. Now, anytime someone mentions that town, sweet, now we're sending that review automatically to that town landing page. Cool. Yeah, really, really, really cool feature. And just one of the things that um, uh, we'll see, I'll give you a sneak peek of something else where we're continuing to try to build on these uh, tags and, and being able to customize review content. Uh, so the last piece, both the tag widget and review widget have this, um, and that's using review schema so that you can get the review stars, rich snippets in the search results, right? So um, here's you know that same uh, craft beer company that we we're talking about. So when you look for craft beer in Richland, Washington, you know, in the organic results, you definitely get different brew houses, but there's only one that has the review stars there. Um, and time and time again, right? Even Google has said, hey, if you have anything related to rich snippets, you're gonna see a bump in click-through rate. And related to reviews, they say at a minimum 20%. But we've seen studies by other experts um, in the industry that suggest as high as a 200% click-through rate increase when you have those review stars. Um, and especially if you're, you know, in an area like this, right, where it's like none of these other breweries have it and these guys do, then you're going to get those massive results. And in others, you might just need to be doing it because once you do that type of search, you're like, oh, holy cow, a couple of my competitors have their reputation already greeting that customer right there in the search and looking very trustworthy. Mm -hmm. We need to get some here. or We're going to be in, in trouble with it. So this is really one of that, that, those big uh, benefits, and this really helps your visibility and, and click-through rates in those search results by being able to achieve that. Uh, another example here, so that engagement page that I just showed you, for Barbara Oliver, right, in a very, you know, engagement rings in Buffalo, New York, a, a mid-size, uh, mid-market city, um, you know, she has a number of things working against her from uh, how far outside of the city is and everything else to appear in the map pack but she's the number two organic result and she's the only result with the review stars, right? So she gets a really healthy click-through rate from her organic listings here, brought to that page that again has everything you expect, a video from her, um, photos of engagement rings, and then you can just read endless stories. I, I'm amazed at, you know, this lady's a customer service dynamo where some people it's hard to get, you know, 10 words in a review. She literally has paragraphs, right? And it's an, it's, it's an emotional, it's a very big purchase. Um, but you know, just content that, that powers what, what she's doing and helping her gain visibility in the search results at a super high level. Uh, anything you want to talk more in depth about here? No, I mean, this is, this is kind of one of those, this is a, this is a tactic that most marketers, uh, sometimes that's what, this is exactly why they're coming for us. It's like, how do we get these review stars for our search results? Well, this is, this is the technique. This is why I signed up with you guys. And his, when I signed up, uh, the widgets weren't pushing review stars for my platform. And it was really cool to work with you to improve that part of your functionality. And once we got that nailed, it's like 100% success right now to get yeah. the review stars yeah. results. And as you saw, like schema is a tricky business, right? It's like, uh, it's not something like, oh, hey, cool, you know, we're good on it. Like, um, uh, Google is introducing so many schema formats and then you have so many sites that are doing a lot. They have location schema, a number of other things. Now you get schema fighting with each other. So it's a concept. I mean, we actually work with a couple of consultants now on a very regular basis to continue to look at what we're doing. How do we reconfigure these things? How are things not interfering? Constantly look in what's going on in the space. 
Google runs their own tests and when they do an update, sometimes it can just drop the stars for no reason. And we usually tell people like, wait a week and then let's talk about it again, just for them to understand like, you know, we're not, we're not going to be able to shake any trees at Google to get them to be like, oh, don't worry, we'll, we'll put those stars back for you. You just got to wait out whatever the, the algo change was or a bug or, or anything else. Yeah, no, I, I think it's, you know, it's definitely one of my favorite parts of your service is getting the review stars. And I think that that is for an agency, that's the, the best selling point. Um, or the easiest way to close somebody is to say, look, we, we put the widget on the site. We asked for feedback. Once we got uh, six reviews, we were able to push it out. Okay. And when we submitted the site through Google Search Console, within a, you know, I've had it happen within five minutes of submitting through Search Console. It's okay. not always that's, that's the case, but um, I've had it happen. And when it does, it's like, holy crap, that's powerful. Yeah. Um, I don't know how it impacts rankings. I mean, do you have any numbers about that? Well, I would, I would say it's more of a correlation instead of causation. I mean, it, it's going to impact click through, right? And so when you get your result being clicked on more and more, like that is, you know, part of all the different things that go into it that can help bring you up. Um, and then you also look at the fact when it, it's bringing more content to the page, more keywords to the page, all of those related type things. Um, it definitely has an impact, it, you know, directly as, you know, if you see the stars, is that a ranking factor? No, but because the stars are there, because you've added content, because it's getting clicked on, those are all, you know, things that are going to contribute to gaining a better ranking because of the visibility. And it also correlates to their concept of trust and, and a high trust page, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, they want to see, it's a reason why they have review schema, right? Is because they understand that a, a user wants to see this. They want to feel good about where they're clicking into because, um, you know, even though Google completely owns and we talk about antitrust with more things around Google than anything else, um, but Google wants every searcher to use them for every type of, of search. So the more they can bring reputable results and make fee people feel confident about what they're clicking into and understanding that business, right in the search result that they feel like that's a win for the consumer. Uh, Jordan, what are your thoughts? Um, what successes have you had using the tool and so far? Yeah, it's, it's been great. Uh, we use it for all of our local clients. <clears throat> We're actually in the midst of incorporating it into a few booking systems. And I love, love the uh, easy API access. So it, I've, it's, it's been fantastic. Nice. Love, love to hear that. Love hearing making things automated. So the, the uh, small bonus I have for you guys to end things today is give you a little sneak peek. We have a, a new report coming out that piggybacks off a lot of what we talked about here um, that's using uh, natural language proce uh, processing and using NLP to be able to understand sentiment and a number of other things. So, you know, what we want to be able to, you know, understand is, because we can even understand inside of a five-star review, people might say, hey, this was great, this was great, this was great, but your bathroom was really dirty. And so we want to help you pick out what are the four things being talked about that were great in this one review and what's the one thing that, that wasn't great. So uh, we just started in an alpha with this and later this month, um, we'll have a, a public beta available. We always let our customers enter a beta uh, if they'd like to. Um, we're tied in, we're using IBM's uh, Watson to, to analyze this stuff. And what we really want to help you do is understand what is the impact of, of what's going on with reviews and rankings. So if we consider the same um, taco shop, we kind of have a number of things in, in the first chart that goes into this report. Um, and we, you can run it for both keywords and tags. So you can see how the themes play out, but also all the tags. Um, but just to explain everything going on here is, you know, our X axis at the bottom is the number of reviews. So how many times is this term being used in a, um, uh, in a appearing in an individual review? What's the average rating when that term is used on the Y axis on the left side? The bigger the shape means more mentions. So, you know, the review, one review might mention the word taco eight times or the word margarita nine times. So we want you to understand the density of what those are. Um, the, the, the green and the red help uh, signal sentiment is it being used in a positive or a negative sentiment. Um, and then that blue line across there, that's what your average rating is. So 
what this is showing you is like, what are the things that are appearing above your average line? These are the ones impacting your business that are raising your review um, average when they happen that frequently. And what are the ones that are, you know, on average or what are the ones pulling uh, your average down with it? Um, so really cool to be able to see something and understand like for this taco shop that like, hey, when people talk about margaritas, it's a full half star higher than our normal average. And it's appearing in 42 um, different reviews with it. And then that's, uh, I was just gonna say, that's quite interesting because then you can use that data and then incorporate it on your local landing page and say, Hey, this spot has amazing margaritas or we'll, we're really well known for tacos here. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. And those are important, important things to figure out. So if I jump, this is, I'm just jumping into that exact one uh, that, that we're talking about now. So this visual impact report, really helpful. Um, but then down below, now we're going to tell you the sentiment, right? And so it's like, all right, people are talking positive about tacos, 133 mentions, and it's a three and a half star average when they mention it. The margaritas one that, that we talked about. Well, we see when people, you know, are upset, right? When they're taught, when staff gets mentioned, yeah. it's usually in a negative review, right? Somebody <laughs> rude, didn't take their order fast enough, whatever, whatever that, that might be. We see timing is important. When they mention minutes, it's not to say, oh, I got my taco in minutes. It's to say like it took 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 50 minutes. That's way too long with it. Uh, and then the other thing we want to help you understand is trends. Um, and just since this was literally just launched in, in the last two days, um, this will be end up telling you the separation, what's changing over time. So now do you have terms that are happening more frequently in the last month or in the last week or the last 90 days? Um, and then if you're a multi-location, like where is this happening at? So now you know is one a leader where it's all this change is happening at one location? Or you can say, nope, I looked at it. All these locations are, are pretty the same with, um, with what's happening with it. So really cool, really powerful. I said both keywords, you can uh, do tags as well. Those end up in, uh, in a different shape. Uh, you can look at all of them together at the same time. You can look at a 10 or 20 um, or even get further in. So yeah, a lot of, a lot of really cool stuff. Sorry guys, that's Google. <laughs> that is totally Google busting my leaf. Okay, sweet. Sorry about that. Oh, good. What's a, what's a video call without it cutting out other noises, a kid running in the background, you know, you got to have something. It wouldn't be complete. They, uh, they're, they're messing up the ingestion or one of my paper click feeds. Ouch. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> well, cool. Well, that's, I mean, that's the, the life cycle of what I wanted to be able to, you know, talk through with you guys and, and share with your audience. But, you know, we really look at this as, you take a couple hours and have it set up and then it can be as no touch as you want it. Now there's obviously a ton of great things where you need to respond to reviews and whatever else, but you can see this is a pretty tight cycle of um, requesting, capturing, understanding, and then using it for marketing firepower and influencing Google, Google search results all in a no touch situation once you have it set up. So some pretty cool automation there. I love it. Um, and the way that I use Zapier is I have a weekly email that goes out to all my clients to remind them to export their customer list and put it into a Google sheet. Yep. Uh, it sounds like I want to do that more frequently than, than I'm doing it. So yeah. I'm yeah. Uh, the, the tightest you can is, is going to be a benefit, but yeah, yeah. that's another, <laughs> another, uh, another great automation that you can do for reminders, right? Yeah. And then... And then they upload and then the zap pushes the data up into your system and then yep. it, uh, dripped out. Perfect. Uh, which is really cool. Yeah. Well, this has been amazing. I, I love your product. And um, I think all the people who watch, watch these hangouts know that, that these are not paid endorsements or anything like that. We just, whatever service we feature, we think that it drives a lot of ROI for our clients and, and we think that people who aren't using it should be. Yeah. Uh, and that's why, that's why we were doing this today. Um, Aaron, this has been amazing. I'm really psyched to see you at MozCon. Can I stop by the booth? Uh, yeah, you can stop by the booth. We got to get you swagged up with some gear and everything else. And yeah, we just need to catch up. So in, in person, not, not over a Zoom call. Can't wait to yeah, see you. Sure. I'm really excited to see you soon. Right. Uh, for everyone else, um, we really appreciate your time. Um, we've got another one of these next week. Jordan, do you remember who our guest is? I really <laughs> do not. 
<laughs> it's not it's not it's not me no no i know uh but we've got another one of these next friday and um this has been a really fantastic hour and by then i'll be healthy again which will be amazing this has been a week of hacking like crazy um aaron you rock jordan as always you're the man and uh everybody have a great week and anyone that's at mozcon uh, please try and track Jordan and I down. Uh, my Twitter handle is at Noah Lerner, N-O-A-H-L-E-A-R-N-E-R. I'd love to meet you in person. And Jordan, remind us what yours is. It's at Jordan Chu. That's J-O-R-D-A-N-C-H-O-O. Cool. Everybody, keep automating. We love you. Ciao. Take care, everyone.